Well, today it is my very special honor to invite up a man that I have had breakfast with many times. He has poured life into me personally. Uh, he is one of our board members here at Kettering Assembly of God, and I know God has a word on his heart. So Dave, would you please come on up? Would you all please give a warm welcome to Mr. Dave Baker. Well, good morning, church. That's it. Good morning, church. All right. Well, um, I am very blessed and honored to uh, be able to speak today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dave Baker. Uh, my, my family has attended this church for over, you know, 40 years or more. And um, I'm just blessed to call this my home church. Um, we're in a season right now that I'm just really excited about. Um, today I have my cheering section here on the front row. Um, my beautiful wife of 25 years, Shannon. Um, yeah. Uh, Trey, uh, my oldest son, goes to Gannon University, plays football. Um, and Drew um, is, a, is a junior at, at Fairmont, and he plays football as well. And you know, I'm just blessed to have a family that, that loves and supports me, and it's good to see them here with their girlfriends on the front row just praising and worshiping the Lord. Um, so, I want to give a shout out to our pastoral staff. You know, as a uh, pastor asked me to, to speak, um, I just really felt this burden and just so blessed to just have the pastoral staff that we have. Um, Pastor Josh and, 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 and Stacy have just been a, such a blessing to this church. And um, the vision that they have, and uh, through the ups and downs of this first year, they've just continued to push through, and I've watched it firsthand as a board member. And um, we're just blessed to have them and the vision that they have for this church. Uh, Pastor Matt, last night he, he gave his first uh, wedding ceremony, official wedding ceremony, and he did an awesome job, but he pours into our youth and, uh, you know, with them getting ready to take off and go to youth camp and all that. We have Pastor Tom with our children's church and his wife Kelly, and just what they've done in that in that children's wing is just absolutely amazing. And the way these kids are coming in and, and we have something now to, that they can just pour into these kids and they to see them worshiping and praising the Lord at a young age, it's just a blessing to have you guys on our staff here at Kettering Assembly. Last but not least is Grant and, and, and Brooke, his wife Brooke. Um, you know, we just got done praising and worshiping the Lord, and it's just so refreshing to be able to come in from a long week and just enter into God's presence and just soak it all up. And so, Grant, thank you for the work you're doing, man. Appreciate it. I know it's a lot of time. But I just wanted to give a shout out um, for our pastoral staff. I think you guys are awesome. Um, and I just, you know, in my heart, last Sunday, um, several of us went to the Re Rebohoth uh, International Church. Um, for those of you that may not know, they started in our church, and um, they actually started in, the, in the, um, one of the discipleship rooms, and then I think they moved to the gym. And, um, and so they got their own church in Dayton now, and... You know, last week, uh, Grant was asked to go and lead praise and worship, and Pastor Josh was asked to go and to give uh, a message. And so Joe Eifert and I, as the board members, were asked to be there, as well as, you know, whoever came, and there were several of you there. But, um, you know, Joe and I are like, hey, you going? Yeah, I'm going to go. Let's go, you know, and, and support our church. And we did the right thing, and um, I'm going to tell you what, what a blessing that was. What a blessing that was. I'm going to tell you, our pastor, and Grant, you did awesome in the praise and worship as always, but our pastor gave a message that absolutely, it rocked my world. And I know it had to have rocked the worlds of everybody in that place because he gave a message on, on uh, serving and how Jesus served his disciples and he washed their feet. Jesus just didn't sit at the table with them and, and them and the disciples serve um, him, but that Jesus actually 
you know, washed his disciples' feet and he served them. He became the low of the low and showed them how to serve as an example. And our pastor, I'll tell you what, he gave that message and then he got down on his knees with a bucket of water and washed this pastor's feet. And it was so humbling. I mean, it broke barriers in that place that, that it was just, the anointing was so thick and powerful. Um, and so I just want to encourage you guys as a board member right now that I believe with all my heart we have the right man leading our church. And he has a great vision, a prayerful vision that he continues to seek every day. I continue to see him, you know, um, clean, bathrooms, paint. He does all these different things, and he's not afraid to get his hands dirty and serve and serve next to you and make this place what it needs to be and what it's going to be. So I'm very excited of where our church is going and what is to come in the weeks and the months and the years to come. So today, I have been asked to give a message since Pastor Josh is in Florida, enjoying the sun and the beach, and going to um, um, to um, general council and be a part of that and support our church and and all that. And you know, at first, I'm gonna not lie to you. I was I was really nervous, and I was just like, you know, Pastor, I just don't know if this is for me making every excuse possible to get out of it. You know, I have two a day starting today for football and all these different things. You know, it's August 1st and that's just a tough day for me, you know. And he's like, you know, hey, that's all right, you know, but you know, hey, if you, know, if you feel like led up to it, you know, please just call me back, let me know. Well, you know how the Lord works. So the next three nights I couldn't sleep. He's waking me up at four in the morning and I got this on my heart and that on my heart and this message and this word on my heart. And I'm like, oh, great, here we go. And so I went to pastors the next Sunday and I said, hey, guess what? Um, I'm gonna have to do this. So I am very, very grateful to be here today. God has put a word on my heart. I know pastor has been um, uh, um, taking you through a series on extreme church makeovers and our church is going through a tremendous makeover right now that is that is awesome and, and I've talked about that a little bit um, but today um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the foundation and the foundation and the importance of the foundation of a structure or an extreme makeover um, so as I'm going to be continuing this series, um, I just, God has put in my heart to just bring up a few different things when it comes to the foundation. And the foundation, to build a strong foundation, you have to have good soil. And the ground has to be just right to have a good foundation that's gonna hold. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the soil and the importance of that. I'm gonna talk about three important functions of a foundation. The first one being that it bears the load of the structure that it's built on, that's built upon it. The second would be that it keeps out things like moisture and things like that from coming in and destroying the structure that is built on that foundation. And then thirdly, that it anchors and, and uh, holds, us in, holds the structure in place uh, from weather or storms and those types of natural um, things that take place. So as I give you the message today, I just want you to keep an open mind um, on the quality of your foundation. Is Jesus your foundation? Are there things causing your foundation with Jesus problems? And so... As I begin this message, I just ask you to keep an open mind, okay? So I'm going to just pray real fast. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to these people and just to pour 
out to them what you've poured into me in these past few weeks. Lord, I just pray, God, that you would just have your way in them today. Show them what you need to show them. Show them what, what you are speaking to their hearts, God, and just let this be about you today, Lord, and nothing else. I pray, God, that we leave changed today and not the same as we came in, that you would make a difference in our lives and that you would be our foundation and our rock that we can hold on to. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the scripture that I'm going to take today is from Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And I'm sure most of you have heard this scripture before. But it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The first step into having a strong foundation is making sure that you're on good soil. I believe that God prepares the soil of our foundation with him by putting people in our lives that can mold us and show us by example how things should be done. I can look back in my life and see people that God has put in my life at a young age that have prepared the soil in my life. I see my grandma. And I can see her coming into her house, and I can remember her watching Benny Hinn. Anybody remember Benny Hinn? I can remember her reading books, and all along her shelf, every single book was about God or the Holy Spirit. I can remember a saying that she used to say all the time, you may not. Feel like it? You may not want to, but it's the right thing, so you're going to do it. And that has stuck with me my whole life, and I'm sure it's stuck with my, my kids and my nephews because they heard that all the time. Like today, I didn't feel like it. I didn't want to. But at the end of the day, it was the right thing to do because he's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's delivered me, and I can take a few minutes of my day to get up here and pour out what God has put into me. I look at my mom and my parents. I remember getting up in the morning and hearing music, not the type of music I was probably listening to as a teenager, but it was, you know, Michael W. Smith and all these other things. But, you know, as I went out throughout my school day, guess what song would come to my mind? You know, it wasn't Hank Jr., wasn't all these other things that I was listening to. It was, it was the subtle things that God had put these people in my life and the subtle things that they did that just reminded me. I look back and I, and I see um, Herbert Cooper. He was a, a, a football player on my football team in, at Evangel College. And Herbert was a go-getter, man. He was there on a Bible uh, scholarship, and he was, or football scholarship, but he was studying to be a pastor. And uh, Herbert, I haven't seen him in a long time or talked to him in a long time. Pastor has. He just saw him at a convention. But Herbert has one of the biggest churches in Oklahoma City. And, um, you know, Herbert just poured his life into me. I have no idea why to this day. I mean, I know why now, how God used him. He put him in my life. But Herbert knew the things that I was going through, understood me, and he just loved me. And he kept loving me day after day, month after month, year after year. And there came a point in my life where You know, I hit rock bottom, and guess who was there? Herbert Cooper knocks on my door the same day 
What coincidence is that? And says, man, I just want you to know, is everything all right? God's put you on my heart. You know, it, what's going on? And I'm like, Herbert, man, you just, you just, man, it's just too much right now. It's too much for me. I just don't. He's like, man, I'm telling you, I've been praying for you all day, man. You've got to come to this thing with me tonight. You know, I, I just really feel God's going to do something in your life tonight. To make a long story short, that's a whole nother sermon. But I end up going to this, 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 uh, this uh, conference with him that night, and my life was radically changed forever. Okay, so Herbert Cooper was a huge, huge person that God put into my life. Uh, Coach Ropke at Evangel, I got to watch him, you know, he gave me a Bible, and once I turned my life totally around and was sold out for God and, and started living for Jesus uh, after all that with, with, with Herbert, um, you know, Coach Ropke just, he, I met Shannon and he, he allowed Shannon to come and stay at his home. And Shannon and I began to be able to see what a, a godly marriage looks like outside of my initial home with my parents. And they had three boys. And I got to see how, you know, they raised their boys in a Christian home. And, you know, you can take all these little things for granted. But as I sat back and I was doing this message, I'm like, Lord, wow. The people you put in my life to prepare the soil of my life for you to be the foundation of my life is amazing. And finally, my in-laws. You know, I tell you, my father-in-law, uh, you know, we butted heads in the beginning like, like most in-laws do. But I, he just, we just begin to love each other. And I just never forget being in his garage and, and he would just pour into me you know, the word of God. And he would just teach me the importance of our words, the importance of studying the word and, and, and not relying on someone else to feed you the word, but that you need to take the time to study it yourself and let God pour into you um, what he wants to pour into you. Um, and so as I, you know, God prepares the soil of our life with people. And I believe that. And, you know, even some of us today or all of us today, we have people watching us and we need to be aware. You know, I'm reminded at times by people I love dearly because we're all imperfect and we all make mistakes, but we all need to be reminded sometimes, hey, that person's watching you. They, they need you as that example in their life. And, you know, so not only is God sending people to us, but God's using us to be that soil preparation for other people so that they can remember the people that God has put in their life. And so as God... Um, uses people to mend and to prepare the soil, we need to just understand that that is a very important process because that's what's going to build our foundation on that soil. And so as I go into the first function of a foundation, the first function of a foundation is that it bears the load of a structure. So as we talk about, you know, building a house, um, that foundation has to be strong to bear the structure that's going to be built upon it. And just as that house on a strong foundation will have to stand the test of time and bear the load of the structure and keep it in place against all the forces of nature, it is key that we have a strong foundation in our spiritual lives as well. And that foundation needs to be on Jesus Christ. No other foundation will do. Okay? Not your friends, not relationships, not your marriage even. Okay? Only one foundation will stand the test of time, and that is Jesus. So... Just like the scripture says in Matthew, the rains are going to come, the storms will blow, the waters may rise, and, the, and your foundation needs to be on Jesus Christ, your rock. 
Some of us today are still living our lives in the preparation stage. And God wants to build that foundation with you. And you're allowing to stay yourself to stay in the preparation stage. Jesus wants to grow us and make us stronger by trusting in him. For some of us, it's been a long time since we truly trusted in him. We've sort of forgotten what God looks like. We've forgotten some of the people that God has put in our life to help mold you and make you into who he wants you to be. We've forgotten the stories and the miracles that God's done in your families and that have been told throughout your generations in your families. We've forgotten the times that God has provided when there didn't seem like there was going to be a way out. Some of you today may even feel forsaken by God. It may be because it's, he's not treating you like a, like a child anymore. He wants you to get out of your preparation stage. He wants you to start building your foundation on him and relying on him, trusting in him. In the storm, God is going to remind us of who he is and what he's done. And that's going to continue to allow us to trust him more and trust him more. God will bear the load if he is your foundation. There's nothing that he cannot do. When you can't do it, he will. You see, David didn't just fight his first battle against Goliath. It was, there was preparation up until that point. I'm sure he was out in the pasture with his sheep. And I'm sure, you know, at one point God sent maybe, you know, a fox. And he had to brush it away. And then maybe it was a wolf. Maybe it was a bear. Maybe it was just some scary noises at night as he was singing hymns. But God reminded David when it came time because of David's foundation in the Lord of who God was. So when Goliath came out and he started mocking God and everyone else started to run and hide, David was prepared. David's foundation was in the Lord and he knew that he could conquer that giant. He had total confidence in his foundation in Jesus Christ and he knew that God would not fail him. It's in these times and these battles that God is wanting to mature us. He doesn't want us just to stay little babies. Eventually, we have to get to where God wants to mature us. He wants you to know that he is always there. That you are always in the palm of his hands. He will constantly be molding you and making you into what he wants you to be. The great thing about God is that he is always holding us in the palm of his hands, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. It doesn't matter where we're at or what we've done, but as long as we keep him our foundation, he will be there for us. So whether you're sick or whether you're well, whether you're rich, whether you're in need, whether you're winning or whether you're losing, Okay, whether, whether we're weak or we're strong, God is always molding us and making us into who he wants us to be. And he's the one that makes us better. He's the one that will bear the load for us if we make him our foundation. We have to quit being satisfied with where we're at and we have to keep pushing into God. We have to want to go deeper I'm reminded of a scripture in Ezekiel where it 
They want to enter into God's presence. And to enter into God's presence, you have to, you have to get out off of the bank. We have to enter in deeper. And, and maybe some of you are ankle deep right now. You need to get knee deep into the water. God's calling you to go deeper with him so that the foundation, his foundation in him can be deeper. But to do that, we have to enter into the waters and not be afraid. Some of us are waist deep and we're doing good and we think, man, my foundation is strong. Things are going great for me. But God, if you just listen saying no, I want you up to here. I want you paddling around where your feet ain't touching the ground no more. I want you to trust me a little more. What happens when you don't have any ground under your feet? And some of us, he's saying, it's time to get in and start swimming. Get in over your head. When we start trusting in him more and seeking him more, he begins to build us and the foundation cannot be shaken. Just like that example in Ezekiel, when we begin to trust him more, you know, people may start swimming around you. <laughs> and if you ain't touching bottom, guess what? You're like, no, no, get away. Don't touch me. Okay. And, and sometimes that's the way we might have to be with some of our friends. I'm getting serious. I need to, I need to distance myself a little bit and, and get serious about the Lord. You have to want to serve him. You have to want to trust him. It's a decision that you have to make on your own. God leads us and, and puts people in our lives for a reason. And he can bear the load of any situation. He will never leave you. He will never forsake in you. He just wants more of you. The second function of a foundation that as I just was, you know, reading about foundations and, and the building part of it um, was that it keeps out things like moisture. And, you know, what God really put on my heart was throughout this whole thing was, you know, the importance of just having a sound mind and, and, and keeping our thoughts in line with the word of God. And so as I seen, I came across this and I'm like, oh, found a good, strong foundation keeps out moisture. I'm like, yes, because in our spiritual life, we have to keep out the moisture. We have to keep out the wrong thinking. We have to learn to line God's word up with our lives and not our lives with God's word. A foundation of a house bears the load of the structure, but it also keeps out moisture and things that would come and destroy it. In our spiritual life, the foundation in Jesus allows us to think right thoughts and keep out anxiety and fear. It allows us to live our lives in line with what God's word says. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our minds are powerful things. What are you thinking upon today? What, are the, what do you spend your time looking at, thinking about, reading, listening to, putting in your body? What are we doing when it comes to what are we thinking about? Is it the things of God? Because the things of this world will surely pass away. They will let you down. This is why it's important that we be renewing our mind daily. It is impossible to have a positive life and think negative thoughts. Roman 8, 5 says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. 
But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. What is that saying? We cannot walk in the Spirit if our mind is on negative, fleshly, wrong thoughts. You can't do both things. Sorry, got a little mixed up here. This is the kind of thinking that's going to cause you problems and that you can't let control your life. You must line your thoughts up with what the word says. You must start using the weapons that God has given us to change this way of thinking. And how do we do that? How do we build our foundation and keep things out of our foundation? By praying, by reading the word, by praising God and thanking him for all the things that he's done in your life, all the things that he's going to do in your life. Get excited about your relationship with Jesus and see what happens. With these three tools, you can start thinking the way God wants you to think and anxiety and fear and wrong thoughts must stay out. When wrong thoughts come in, you got to take them captive. You got to say, not here, not today, devil. You know, as Trey was off at school last year, that was really hard for Shannon and I to have our oldest gone. And the devil in the middle of the night sometimes would just attack me and, and, and just be like, oh, I wonder what he's doing. Oh, I wonder if he's all right. Oh, and I just have to say, no, 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 no. My thoughts ain't going there. He's covered in the blood of Jesus. He has angels before him and behind him. He's going to be fine. We have to learn to trust in the Lord. And just like Matthew 7 said in the beginning, we, it's not all right just to know what God says. We have to practice it. Or else we're on sinking sand. So... You have to learn to line your thinking up in every area of your life, whether it's your kids or your job or your health, and realize that our words are powerful. But if we can just line it up with what the Word says, and God, and trust in Him to be your foundation, and He's going to keep that stuff out. What you put in will come out. What you reap, you will sow. These are principles of God. They will not change. Matthew 12, 33 says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. You make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. The same is true in our lives. Your thoughts bear fruit. Good thoughts produce good fruit. Bad thoughts produce bad fruit. And I'm going to say it again, Proverbs 23, 7. Where your mind goes, you will follow. Set your mind on the things of the Lord. Let's let not our thoughts control our lives. Negative thoughts and negative thinking will cause problems in your foundation with Jesus. Your thoughts must line up with his word. Take your thoughts captive. Keep out the negative thinking by lining up your life with the word of God and his promises. And finally, the third function of a foundation that I felt the Lord putting on my heart is that it keeps a structure in place. We sang a song this morning and it was just awesome just talking about God being our anchor. If he's your foundation, he's your anchor. No matter what you do or where you go, how you act, he still loves you. He's never going to leave you. He's always there holding you in the palm of his hands. And it's this same way in our spiritual lives. Through the ups and downs in our life, God as your foundation will keep you in place. He will keep you anchored. 
God's grace and love and mercy are always there for us. The storms of life will come. We must have our foundation built on Jesus Christ. And I know I keep saying that, but obviously that's the whole point this morning. I'm, I'm just real. I'm just like you guys. Just a football coach that's learned to just trust in Jesus. But I can honestly say he's, he's, he's always been there. I've won some battles. I've lost some battles. But God has always, always anchored my life. When I want to go this way, he's, nope, you're staying right here. And he reminds me of what he's done. He starts reminding me. Like this, sermon, this message, I mean, I just get so overwhelmed. I, it just took me back. And I haven't done that in a while. The storms of life will come and we must have our foundation built on Jesus Christ. He is our strong foundation, our rock that we can lean on. He is our hope and he is the one constant that will never change. He will keep you grounded and we can trust in him in all circumstances that life may throw our way. Grant, if you wouldn't mind coming up. I'm just going to start closing here, but I, you know... Let me find my conclusion here. What's the last one? Sorry about that. I threw a lot at you this morning because God just put a lot on my heart and I just tried to put it together. So I hope that there's someone here this morning that just could take something from this. As you look at your life and you, you inspect your foundation with the Lord and the relationship that you have built with him, have you forgot about some of the things he's done for you? Are you spending time with Jesus every day, praying, reading the word, and praising him for who he is and what he's done and going to do for your life and your family, your children, your grandchildren, your future? Are there cracks forming or already formed in your foundation with him that could result in devastation if you don't take the time to fix them? It may take some time or it could be costly, just as it would if you had a repair on the foundation of your house. Sometimes you can just see, oh, ooh, there's a little crack forming. And you can patch it yourself. Sometimes you have to have someone, you start seeing your walls crack and it's a little bit worse than you thought it was. And it may take a little longer. It may cost you a little more to fix it. But are you willing to dig down deep and, and to fix that foundation that may be underground? Is it worth it to ignore the imperfection of your foundation with Jesus for a few more weeks of pleasure? Doing things that are not pleasing to him, things that, are, that may just be satisfying to you, just getting you by for now. Are you trusting in him today in every area of your life to the best of your ability? Have you given up and let the enemy take over your mind? We all struggle with different things, all of us. We're all going through different things. We're all dealing with different things. The question is, is are we going to let these things continue to come in and destroy our foundation with Jesus Christ? Are we just going to cross our fingers and hope that our foundation will last the way that things are going? We all heard the story a month or so ago about the condo in Miami, Florida. There were many inspectors and people that walked throughout that condo and saw the cracks forming, saw the issues happening. 
but they let it go. Don't wait until it's too late. Take time today if you haven't taken time to spend with Jesus to come to the altar and make things right with him. All of us are at different areas. All of us, our foundation is stronger than others. But we can all take time to say, Lord, I want to go deeper with you. I want my foundation to be stronger in you. Maybe you need to pray about your devotion life. Maybe you need to pray about your prayer life. Whatever it is, don't wait. Because you don't know what's around the corner. None of us do. I'm going to just finish by saying, Jesus loves you. It's that simple. He loves all of us, but he wants us to pursue him. Today, before you leave, if you just feel like you need to make things right with the Lord and you need to, you need to just pray, maybe it's been a while, and you need to say, Lord, I want my foundation to be in you. Don't worry about what you've been doing, where you've been, or what's going on. Just focus your eyes on Jesus this morning. And we're just going to end it by saying the altar's open. And let the Lord speak to your heart.